In this video, we're going to be taking a look at official SteamOS 3.8 running on this Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 mini PC from Minus Forum. This is the MSS1, and if you're not familiar with this PC or the chipset we have here, basically what we're working with is a really powerful APU with the most powerful iGPU on the market right now, the AMD Radeon 8060S. This little PC can reach up to 140 watts. It's got 128 gigabytes of RAM, and with official SteamOS installed, I mean, this makes for a really great living room mini PC that plays everything that I've thrown at it at 1440p. And remember, we're just using an iGPU here. So this might look a little different than the Steam Deck's interface, and that's because I've got kind of a custom theme going on here using a Decky Loader and CSS Loader. You can totally customize the way everything looks, and now that we've got official SteamOS support for the uh, Strix Halo APUs, we're going to see some really nice little mini PC setups with SteamOS installed. It's been a little while coming, and I'm on 3.8. I'm using the main branch of SteamOS. I mentioned that we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. With this, we get 16 cores, 32 threads. This system has 128 gigabytes of RAM, and from the BIOS, we can actually dedicate up to 96 to that iGPU. So I've done this. It's way more VRAM than we'll ever need for a system like this. But with SteamOS, I mean, 128 gigabytes is definitely overkill anyway. Figured we'd just go ahead and put it over there on that GPU. And as soon as I installed SteamOS 3.8, I noticed that we had Wi-Fi support which was really awesome because I did test this on another PC and Wi-Fi was not working. I had to use Ethernet. But another thing we have here is actually Bluetooth support. So if we go into here, we'll just add device and I'll show you, yeah, it's going to scan. So you can add Bluetooth accessories really easily. Since this system isn't officially supported by Valve, I figured we might run into a few issues with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But with the Menace Forum MSS1, everything here seems to be working. Like I mentioned, the TDP on this can do up to 140 watts, and from the BIOS, you usually can't change settings like I'm about to show you. But with a tool like Smokeless UMAP from GitHub, you can actually get into the very advanced BIOS settings. And from here, we can change the Precision Boost Override to Advance and overclock the Ryzen AI Max 395. We can also overclock the 8060 Si GPU. Albeit it's not by that much, but it does help out a little bit, especially given that we can do up to 140 watts with this unit. So on the CPU side, from our CPU boost clock override, I can go up 200 megahertz, and the stock clock on the Max Plus 395 is 5.1 gigahertz. Taking this up, 200 megahertz will bring us up to 5.3. And as for that Radeon 8060 Si GPU, stock clocks on that are 2900 megahertz. And from here, changing the GPU boost clock override and take this up by 200 megahertz. So the stock clock on that iGPU is 2900 megahertz. Now with this enabled, we're up to 3100 megahertz on the iGPU. So we've got a little bit of an overclock on this thing also. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming to see how this thing really performs with SteamOS installed. The first one I wanted to try here was Doom the Dark Ages. We're at 1440p high settings with FSR set to quality. I kind of find this APU good for 1440p high with some FSR or 1080 Ultra no FSR. It's really on par with something like the RX 7600 for sure, but it's in an iGPU form factor, which is really impressive. I did try this at Ultra, but I had some dips when there was a lot of explosions on screen under 60, so I just went down to high with it and it still looks great at 1440. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p Ultra, and the Ultra preset here does take FSR to quality, but I'm using FSR 3 instead of 2.1. I find it performs a little better with these newer iGPUs based on RDNA 3 or 3.5. On older RDNA 2 architecture, I'd say FSR 2.1 is great. And it's not the case with every single game that supports 2.1 and 3.1 FSR. But with Cyberpunk, I kind of find that going to 3 is really the way to go. But we're seeing some great frame rates here at 1440 Ultra on this iGPU setup. Here's Borderlands 4, and I've done a lot of testing with this in Linux and Windows. Windows does perform much better with this game, and it just really comes down to game optimizations. Where at 1440, I had to take it down to medium with FSR set to balance, and even then, when there's lots of explosions on screen, you'll see it dip under 60. And it's not horrible by any means. It's not falling on its face, it's going down to like 54 every once in a while. 
but in Windows on the same platform, 1440p high with FSR set to quality, we see averages of around 72 FPS. Witcher 3 Ultra, no FSR, and I play this game so much on IGPs, always have to drop the settings down, I forget how beautiful it is. Kind of like Red Dead Let's Redemption go. 2. Going over there, you know, on a higher end system, being able to take all those settings up, really does give you a totally different experience. And the same thing is true here for The Witcher 3. I mean, this is an absolutely beautiful game at ultra settings. And with it set up like this, we're seeing an average FPS of around 88. Spider-Man 2, 1440p, very high settings with FSR set to balanced. This is one of those games that gives any iGPU a run for its money, and originally I went into this with no FSR on, seeing an average of around 52. Take it up to quality, it's getting close, getting those dips, but you know, balanced is kind of the way to sit if you want to use those very high settings on this. With other iGPUs on the market, I usually just turn on frame gen, but nothing really comes close to the 8060S except for that 8050S and the Max 385. Still both very high-end chips. God of War Ragnarok 1440p Ultra with no FSR. It's just a really well-optimized game. During battle here, lots going on. We do see some dips into the mid 70s with it, but on average, we're around 86 FPS with this game. And this is a native 1440p. We don't need any scaling with this setup. Not a super hard game to run on a real dedicated iGPU at all. I mean, going up to 1440p, maxing out the settings does work out really well in a lot of different systems. But when it comes to iGPUs, especially in Linux, even with some of the more powerful iGPUs out there, we kind of get locked at around 56 to 58, even taking it down to like 900p low settings. So it's really good to see that we can run this at a constant 60 on this system, maxed out at 1440p. Another thing I wanted to talk about here were temps and total power consumption from the wall. With SteamOS installed on this system, remember we've got a little bit of overclock on the CPU and GPU, plus we're up to 140 watt TDP. With 1440p gaming, our average was 72 degrees Celsius and the maximum I recorded was 83, so we never hit thermal throttle. And this does have a dual cooling fan system that Minus Forum came up with. It's not super loud, even under a load, but if you wanted to keep it cooler, you could go into the BIOS and adjust that fan curve for sure. And when it comes to overall power consumption from the wall, I mean, this is everything that the system's drawing. At idle, it's pulling around 16 watts in total. 1440p gaming it jumps up to 187 watts, and the maximum I saw using a kilowatt meter from the wall was 236 watts. So it's not a super low power consumption PC, but it really wasn't meant to be either. It's not pulling as much as a full-size desktop with a dedicated GPU, and we're still seeing some great performance. If somebody did put something like this together, I, I guess the main use case scenario would be gaming, but you gotta keep in mind, we've also got a full-fledged desktop operating system here. If we head to power, we can switch to desktop, and from here, you can get all of your everyday tasks done. We still have Discover installed here with SteamOS 3.8, so it makes it really easy to get other applications. And you could always use console or terminal, but from here, you just kind of pick and choose what you want. You can go with, uh, you know, some games, there's emulators built in. You can install some third-party plugins if you wanted to, like EMU deck on this system. We can swap right back over to gaming mode very easily. Personally, I like installing something like GIMP for uh, photo editing. You can do some video editing if you want to. And we've got more than enough power to use this as an everyday desktop PC with that AMD Ryzen Max Plus 395. So yeah, overall, the system runs great with SteamOS 3.8 installed. And with this PC, I mean, we've got dual M.2 slots. You could always set up a dual boot system if you wanted to really easily. And you won't have to partition a single SSD. You could go with two totally different operating systems on two totally different drives. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I've personally been waiting for the ability to boot official SteamOS on Strix Halo and Strix Point. With 3.8, we've now got it. So you can install this on like an HX370 handheld also if you wanted to. And I will have more videos on the way. So if there's any other devices you want to see official SteamOS running on, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.